Nick. Hi, mate. You're blues through and through. Yeah. I know you are. Home and away. Yeah. You're always there. Talk to us about your time following the club. I'm going to tell you right from the start. So when I was seven, I was in primary school and the teacher got everybody to go up to the front one at a time and say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And people said, you know, teacher, lawyer, blah, blah, blah. I went up to the front, what do you want to be when you grow up? Trevor Francis, that was my answer. So I've supported them all my life. My parents are Blues fans, my granddad was a Blues fan, my grandma was a Villa fan. But yeah, yeah, uh, and, me, and my girls are, are Blues fans as well, so I've always, it's in my blood throughout for my life, you know, and that's it. No choice. Uh, a gift, I see it as, it's a <laughs> gift, you know, yeah. yeah. So what year was that that you first started following the club? I mean, all my life, so I was born in 66, great year for England. Okay. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so I've, I've always supported them. I remember the first time I cried about football was when we got in like the semi-final against Luton or whoever it was. Or I can't remember who the team was, yeah, when, when there was like a last minute they beat us in the semi-final. Yeah, I remember crying about that. I was probably seven or eight or something, yeah. yeah. And you may have had a few more tears following Blues over the years. Loads, loads, <laughs> yeah. But joys as well, so many, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. And you wouldn't change it for anything? It's the best, isn't it? It's the best. I mean, I, for people who get football, then what a club blues is, do you know what I mean? Because um, it has history, it has meaning, um, it's much more than just a football club. It is a genuine family um, and you really feel that. You feel that home and away. You go to an away game, as people, you know, you chat to folks who know your name, no, I'd, you, you, you don't know who they are, you don't know their names necessarily, but you know those faces that you've seen over the years and years and years. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing. I honestly think it's a wonderful thing. Tell us about some of the moments that really stick out over the years where you've really made some great memories. Wow. Um, so I was at the Leyland Daff final in 1991, where Johnny Gale scored probably the best ever goal that Wembley's ever seen. But best away days, it's hard to choose them. Obviously, the Carling Court victory was out of this world. I will never forget it. When Oberfemi Martin scored that goal, I started crying. Mm. I didn't stop crying until like five minutes after the final whistle. I just couldn't believe that we were going to actually win something. It was like, oh my gosh. And my girls were with me as well. Rosie and Abby were with me, which is like the best thing ever, you know. So only wish my dad had been there with me that day. Mm. He couldn't make it, unfortunately. He was looking after my mum. Wow. Um, Bruges away, gosh, Bolton away, last day of the season. Again, these, you can't replicate those, you can't replicate those experiences. They are, and remember Bolton, it was a draw. That's all it was. And yet it's like one of the most memorable away days ever, you know, so. Um, and then home games, of course, there's been many, many home games. Like I remember West Ham in the, in the League Cup semi-final yeah. here. I mean, gosh. I was in that terrifying place, which is the Olympic Gallery, Oof. which is, you do feel like you're going to fall onto the floor, don't yeah, you? So, yeah. yeah, yeah, what an amazing, they're all amazing, amazing, amazing games, yeah. yeah. That feeling of being a Blues fan in those moments, it means the world, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, and, and like you say, it doesn't matter about the result, it's actually that togetherness and that belonging and, you know, that identity as a, as a, as a Blues fan that, yeah, is, is, a, is a wonderful thing. And, yeah, recently, West Brom away, Hull away, I was there on Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, we get results as well, which is fantastic. But you enjoy the trip no matter what the result. The result really ain't the important thing. You've always got a smile on your face. That's one thing I can say. Yeah, yeah, because I'm a slightly crazy, yeah. <laughs> well, you're here tonight. We're hoping to give you a little bit of hospitality. Brilliant. As a thank you for all your support over the years and everything that you do with the Supporters Club. Mm -hmm. It means a lot. and It's mm -hmm. our chance to give back. But we know as well you've been going through a tough time yourself of late. You've mm -hmm. got your own battle. And you've been quite, quite educational in the way that you've explained to people what you're going through. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us exactly what it is and exactly how you're tackling it? Sure. So I've got bowel cancer. Uh, how did I find out? I had some symptoms which I ignored for a while. And then I went to the doctor about something else and then said, while I'm here, just let you know about these symptoms. And that doctor, never seen the doctor before, did a great job, did an examination and said, we need to get you tested. Got tested you've got bowel cancer, um, which obviously is a big shock. <laughs> um, but then the NHS has been amazing. 
um, and you know I'm undergoing treatment. I've had radiotherapy and chemo. I'm under chemotherapy at the moment, um, and you, you know you just got to do as you're told, yeah. and uh, and take the tablets, and and, uh, and and then you know the treatment will do its work. But I think for me, I, I know some people like to keep illness like this private, which I totally understand because it's up to you how you deal with it. But for me, I like to sort of I, I wanted to share it. Dose number two, day number one. Keep up. Um, we need three of these. One, two. Ooh, that's not easy. Three. <gasps> I dropped it. Three. Three. I know you can't see them, but they're they are here. I wanted to tell everybody. Firstly, so I didn't have to keep it secret. But secondly, because it's an opportunity to to say to people, don't ignore symptoms. Blood in your poo. Don't ignore it. Do something about it. Get tested. Um, tell your doctor, you know, all of these things. And I think, I mean, men and women are probably just as bad as the other at, at, at ignoring some of these things. But, um, you know, it, yes, these things are difficult and they might be a bit embarrassing, but get tested. Um, don't just leave things. Um, because then the treatments these days are incredible. They're incredible. So, um, so yeah, so I've just been sharing, you know, how it, how it is. I always have a smile on my face, even if sometimes it's yeah. tough. Um, daily tablets, morning and night. Yeah, gosh, are you, are you bored of that yet? Oh, God, no, I think the way you've approached it is brilliant because it's, it shows people that, look, this is a very human thing and it's the reality and you've tackled it head on and, like you said, you've shared it. And I think hopefully it's gained a bit, of, uh, a bit of positivity for yourself to be able to go through that and hear from people who are there for your journey. Mm, I mean, honestly... People have been amazing, like yeah. family, friends, people who I haven't spoke to for 30 years have been in touch. But Blues fans, honestly, the folks that come up to me and that, have, I say thank you to every single one of them because they've been absolutely beautiful and amazing they have. And, and also, some people have come up to me and said, or contacted me and said, I've got tested and I wouldn't have done and now I have done. And to me, that's like, yeah, that's well, great. That's where news, you've really you know? made a difference yeah, to people. That's good, yeah. yeah. Well, again, it's another example, isn't it, of the, the community, of the club, the family. Yeah. People sticking together and now looking to you for an example. That's a powerful thing. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, just being able to, if you can share a story that, you know, encourages people, helps people, um, then, you know, that's a great, it's a, it's a, you know, you're making something positive out of something difficult. So I think that it's a bit like being a blues fan, making something positive Absolutely. out of something difficult, you know Absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. Well, we always <laughs> say, don't we? Keep right on. It's joys and sorrows. Yeah. But if you can put on a brave face and focus on the positives, yeah. it's a lot easier. Yeah. And, and, it, and it is tough sometimes and, and it's been hard sometimes and there's been difficult moments, but... Um, but the support of Blues fans, but yeah, family and friends as well, and many other people besides has been uh, has been great and helped me helped me keep going so far. So brilliant. Well, you've still got a smile on your face. You're battling all the way through. We love you for it, Nick. You're an amazing Blues fan. We hope you enjoy your night tonight. Cheers, Davo. And as always, keep right on and keep everyone posted. We're all on your side. We're all pulling for you, and we're all part of the journey with you. Thanks, Davo. Keep right on. Thanks, man. Legend. Cheers.